Four years ago, my father was diagnosed with cancer. The best doctors, the best surgeons in the country, declared his case inoperable. As a bioengineer, my reaction was that of a scientist as well as loving daughter. I leapt into action, and due to my background, I was able to connect my parents with the best robotic surgeon. My dad's surgery was a great success, and shortly thereafter, he walked me down the aisle at my wedding, and is back to creating art. Here, a human surgeon's capabilities, augmented by robotic capabilities, enabled a superhuman, life-saving feat. This is the 20th anniversary of my graduation from Professor Larry Stark's lab here at Cal. He was a bioengineering pioneer. Fun fact: his pupilometer was used in the futuristic movie Blade Runner to diagnose whether a robot was human. In our telerobotics and VR work, we talk about presence as how real an experience feels. Presence, to those familiar with mindfulness, also means awareness of self and body. When I graduated from Cal, I knew I wanted to make an impact. Little did I know that my vision would hit me on such a personal level. I always knew technology could enhance the human experience. The human body is an amazing machine that carries us through our fleeting life journey. However, technology can augment our capabilities to transcend some of the limitations inherent to our human condition. It can help us to create new embodied realities and extend our presence. It can help us to be more human. Since Cal, I've worked on numerous projects at the intersection of bioengineering, robotics, and human factors. Which is understanding the human body to design systems that optimize human performance. The goal is technology collaborating with humans to support us in our lives and work. This is especially important when developing moonshot products for mission-critical environments like surgery and medicine. My experiences as patient and provider have also inspired patient-centered design that empowers the patient as an integral part of the care team. And along my journey, I've learned about three ways technology can enable us to extend our presence: augmented, remote, and virtually. Technology is already augmenting our capabilities to be superhuman versions of ourselves. I first encountered this as a development team member on the first FDA-cleared surgical robot. In traditional open surgery, the surgeon operates through a large incision using handheld instruments. Minimally invasive surgery is done through small incisions, but requires the surgeon to use long instruments from outside the body while viewing the operative site via a scope through yet another incision. What surgical robots do is they return the surgeon to an ergonomic posture with restored hand-eye coordination, improved visualization, and increased dexterity. This results in faster patient recovery and better outcomes. And importantly, surgical robots enable humans to do impossible procedures. Things that were impossible before are now humanly possible. This is what saved my dad's life. The next generation of surgical robots is poised to be even more powerful. Working with the Telemedicine Advanced Technologies Research Center to reimagine the OR of the future, we identified a vision of a seamless process from diagnosis to intervention. What surgical robots enable is they enable data from other systems to be integrated for preoperative simulation and planning, as well as intraoperative image guidance, safety, and automation. But what if we could overcome our physical limitations to project our presence to be somewhere else through physical avatars? The big healthcare challenge is providing care. That is higher quality, lower cost, and more accessible. There are not enough specialists in rural underserved areas, and this is especially a problem for acute conditions. For example, stroke patients who could have been saved in a critical three-hour time window go untreated sometimes because many ERs just don't have the stroke expertise. During my time at InTouch Health, we created remote presence robots to solve this challenge. These were the first FDA-cleared telemedicine robots. 
They enable remote clinical specialists to deliver acute care consults by connecting via an internet-enabled laptop or tablet to a robot at the patient site. Through these robotic avatars, they're able to move, see, hear, interact with the patient, staff, and family as if they were there in person. These robots are now in 1,600 hospitals, 22 countries, 30 clinical service lines, and up to 850,000 consults to date. With this kind of virtual healthcare network, patients everywhere now have immediate, equitable access to the best clinical expertise, regardless of where they live. The ultimate vision was to let the physician focus on the clinical task, so they would just click on the target destination of map to send the robot there. This meant the robot had to be self-driving in hospitals these physicians have never even been to, in crowded, dynamic, stressful ED environments. It also had to help maneuver in vulnerable, tight spaces like the ICU, as well as take on routine navigation tasks like rounding. The result was the Vita, virtual and independent telemedicine assistant. Virtual when it's a physical avatar for the physician, and independent when it's navigating by itself. As a bioroboticist, this was a unique opportunity for me to bring to life, from moonshot idea to real clinical impact, the first FDA-cleared robot with autonomous navigation. And along the way, I learned a couple of things about humans. As virtual embodiment of the physician, the robot needed to look friendly, approachable, caring, professional. It needed to look humanoid without looking too human. And importantly, it had to be huggable, but not rideable by kids. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing a robot to life can almost be like creating a human being. We have a mental model of a place and body senses that help us navigate the world around us. Similarly, a robot has a mental map of a space and sensors that help it detect obstacles in real time and avoid them. It's almost like bringing up a child. We had to teach the robot how to interact not just with objects, but, but with humans, basically social skills. For example, the robot sometimes came too close to people, so it needed to be mindful of personal space, which could be 12 to 18 inches, depending on the cultural context. And if it needed to squeeze past people, it needed to say something like, excuse me. <laughs> we also found that we had to offer a spectrum of human-robot task sharing, from teleoperation with obstacle detection and avoidance to supervisory to fully autonomous navigation. <laughs> Patients and clinical teams have emphasized the humanness of the interaction. This the technology just melts away, and it's just another way to see the dock. For physicians, it's a way for me to be right there with the patient. This returns me to the patient's bedside. So these robots are actually enhancing the human connection. These kinds of technologies can revolutionize what it means to be present in all aspects of life. Those who are unable to walk, travel, leave their homes can now explore the world freely. Kids who are sick or unable to go to school can now remotely attend and interact with their peers. These insights can also be used to extend human presence not just on Earth, but into space as we explore the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Presence can also be extended beyond the real world, overcoming physical and cognitive limitations to project a presence through virtual avatars. With the XPRIZE and Ron Berry Foundations, I developed concepts for a future XPRIZE to create transformative technologies using VR that will change how humans interact with one another. Virtual embodiment and avatars can change our perception of ourselves as well as each other. Body agency creates the illusion that a virtual body is ours, even though it may look different. This can be used to address cognitive biases. Furthermore, behaviors experienced in VR can carry over into real life and change our very biology. We can make our imagined body a reality. For example, paralyzed patients who controlled robotic exoskeletons after training in VR saw regeneration of nerve function. 
while dystopian narratives speculate about machines as existential threats to humanity, the reality is that we are already part cyborg with our contact lenses and pacemakers. We are augmented by technology to transcend some of our human limitations. As every aspect of our lives becomes digitized, the human element becomes even more crucial. Even if an AI can diagnose better than human doctors, we will never lose the need for the human touch, especially when it comes to medicine and our mortality. When people ask me, is that robot my job replacement? My answer is no, this will make your job and life easier. Technology will enable us to focus our time on the things that humans are good at, that only humans can do, the things that make life creative, that make life meaningful. Machines can enrich our human experience. We can create new embodied realities and ultimately make us more human. Thank you.